Welcome to another Tech Tips Tuesday. In this episode, we're going to take a look at a Variac and an isolation transformer and some safety issues you may not be aware of when using your brand new isolation transformer. So let's get right into the video. The very first thing we're going to discuss is the isolation transformer. And I'm going to give you a few tips on how to use this device safely. So they've done a couple of things uh, in these modern isolation transformers that could make this device not so incredibly safe. And I'll just discuss that with you in a moment here. So really what this device is, is nothing more than a one-to-one -one ratio transformer. Nothing special. We have a primary that runs at 120 volts. So you plug this plug into the wall and we have a secondary that our 120 volts comes out of, which is of course the hot and the neutral pins on this side. Now there is no connection between the primary side and the secondary side of this transformer, creating isolation from your AC mains. And this is an absolute must have for every service bench. Now, if you like working on all American five or all American six radios, guitar amplifiers, older receivers, old televisions that have series string chassis and some that don't even, uh, you know, these are very, very important to have at any service bench. This just really is uh, uh, another thing in the line to protect you from your AC mains. You could look at it like that. Now, there's one thing that can make this device a little bit dangerous, and it is the earth or ground pin. So we have on the primary side here, the side that plugs into your wall, we have, you know, our earth or ground pin, whatever you want to call this thing. And it's just code to, since this is an open frame or a metal frame transformer here, this has got to be attached to the frame just in case the frame ever becomes live. And I'll show you that with a continuity beeper here. So I'll put one probe on the earth or ground pin, safety ground pin, and I'll touch the the, uh, the case of the transformer here, and you can see that we, you know, have a connection there. And this carries through to this side of the outlet here. All right, so if I poke my probe in here, you can see that we have a connection from the safety ground or earth pin on this side to the case of the transformer and to the output or to the secondary side outlet of this transformer. Now, you need to be aware that since this safety ground or earth connection is attached to this side here, you may not be isolated. And I'll explain that on a piece of paper here in just a moment. In order to understand the issue with the isolation transformer and the wall wiring, I'll demonstrate this on a piece of paper. So we have our isolation transformer here, which is really just a one-to-one -one transformer. So we have a primary side and a secondary side here. This is the outlet that's mounted in the plate of the actual isolation transformer on the secondary side. And then on the primary side, we have a wall outlet that runs here. And then of course, this is our, our ground pin or earth pin. And that runs over here and carries over to here. And it's also connected to the core of the transformer. Now there is no connection here. You can see this wire jumps this one. So there is no connection here. So it's just the ground or the earth pin is carrying through. And again, we know that it's connected to the core. And this is really just a one to one transformer. So it's 120 on the primary and that gives us 120 out on the secondary side. So this has to plug into the wall. So if we look at our wall outlet here, we have a long slot, a short slot, and then we have the, uh, the actual earth or ground pin, whatever you want to call it. So the long slot is the neutral. The short slot is the hot side. And of course, this is our ground pin or earth pin, whatever you want to call it. And all of this runs back to our breaker panel. So what a lot of people don't realize is that in the breaker panel, the neutral and the earth or the ground connection attach. So there's a connection between this and this in the actual panel. And of course, this is the neutral or the center leg of the transformer on the pole. And this also runs off to a ground or a ground rod. So through schematic eyes or electrical eyes, you can look at this as this being neutral and this being hot 
on this transformer here and this here is going back to the breaker panel and connecting to this. So we actually have a connection between the ground and the neutral on this side effectively carrying that over onto this side. So we have a low ohms connection between neutral on the primary side to the secondary sides ground. Okay, so this is still classified as ground or earth, but we know at the panel that this is connected to the neutral side. So technically we have a low ohms path. So we know that one wire is carrying through from this side to this side. And this can be extremely dangerous and I'm going to show you why with a piece of test gear here. This is one real common mistake that I see a lot of newer techs make. And I think the reason that this mistake is made so often is because people just grab their handheld digital voltmeters and read line voltage with it and they think it's A-OK -okay to do that with, you know, an oscilloscope or something like that. Well, it isn't. And it isn't even if you have your oscilloscope plugged into an isolation transformer. So a lot of people, or newer techs, they want to take a look at their line frequency and see how clean their, you know, the, the AC is coming into their local wall outlet. So what they do is they figure, oh, okay, I'll plug my oscilloscope into an isolation transformer and everything will be just fine. Well, it absolutely is not. So right now I've got this oscilloscope plugged into this and this just plugs into the mains. And then I've got this white cord back here. It's also plugged into the mains. It's a shorter cord, so I just plugged it into a different outlet. And the mains are just hooked to two clips here, hooked into the wood so I can very easily get to this. All right, so what I've got here is an oscilloscope probe and this is attached to my oscilloscope. And what most people try to do is just like with their normal voltmeter, they try and read the mains. Well, that's very deadly, even with an isolation transformer. So what I'll do is I'll show you right here, okay? So this is the mains lead here. All right, so you have a 50-50 chance of getting this right, okay? This is a 100-watt light bulb, a standard incandescent 100-watt light bulb, okay? And this is the probe. So what I'm going to do is effectively put this incandescent light bulb in series with the negative probe here, or the common probe of the oscilloscope. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put that in line and I'm going to mimic hooking this up to the line here. All right. Of course, I don't want to do that because if I directly clip this onto the line, I'm going to see a very, very big flash and things are going to be absolutely horrible and it'll destroy my probe and, and uh, possibly hurt my oscilloscope. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to touch the outside of this light to this clip here and I'm going to take my negative and this will just mimic me hooking it directly up there but if there's a problem obviously this light bulb is going to light up because I've got a, a load in the middle here. So what I'll do is I'll just touch this and look at that. So if I was to directly hook this probe right up to that connection right there which goes directly to the mains there would have been a horrible horrible flash. I would have blown the negative probe right off of, or the uh, negative wire or common lead, right off of my oscilloscope probe here, probably damaged the oscilloscope down here. And, uh, you know, caused some more damage just because of not knowing that you just can't do that. And the reason that you can't do this is these connectors here these B and C barrels, the outside barrel portion of the B and C cable is directly connected to the earth or safety ground wire in your outlet. So when we look at the, the plug of our oscilloscope here, this lead right here is directly connected to this. Now since this is directly connected to this and if you recall the schematic that we just looked at, this is also runs back to the breaker panel and connects to the neutral. So if you want to look at this in short, this is a neutral connection. So you only have a 50-50 chance of getting that probe correct 
when you're sticking it in your wall outlet and that's a very very dangerous thing and most all oscilloscopes are like this there are some that have isolated inputs which are you know a, a much safer thing to to have when you're doing a lot of high voltage work and and things like that or if you don't know the polarity of what's happening there's uh, all sorts of different reasons for having isolated probes on the inputs but most of those are also battery powered and uh, they'll, they'll have a remote switch mode power supply behind them you know uh, there's a, a lot of really nice uh, fluke oscilloscopes that uh, have isolated inputs and, and you know like you can't uh, you know there, there's no issues with this kind of stuff but for most all standard oscilloscopes this here directly goes to the the earth pin or the the ground pin of your oscilloscope so you need to keep that in mind all right now with an older isolation transformer this would not be an issue and i'll just go get something here and i'll be right back and i'll show you why this little device here allows you to give a ground to an outlet that doesn't have a ground and consequently it'll allow you to do things in reverse so I'm just going to use this outlet here as an example to give you an example of some of the older isolation transformers that did not have this pin. Now I do not suggest in any way shape or form that you do this with your isolation transformer. If you use one of these things you definitely do so at your own risk. So you need to take care. Again this is just an example. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug the oscilloscope into this and I'm going to put this into the isolation transformer down here and I'll get everything turned on again and we'll do this demonstration one more time. Okay, I've got everything hooked back up. I have this little block in here that is now isolating the ground of this oscilloscope just for demonstration's sake here. Alright, everything's still hooked up. So what we're going to do is do the same test over again with these two wires here and that 100 watt bulb. So I'll grab the probe. And I'll just touch this to this one here. So technically this in the last test was earth or the neutral side and this was hot. So what I'm going to do is touch this here. You'll see that we have absolutely no connection there. And I'll touch it to this side here and we have no connection through. So you can see that we're at this point we have more isolation. And of course this is still hooked up to the AC mains. I can show you that right now. You can see that, right? Hooked up to the AC main still. So, you can see that with this isolation transformer and the oscilloscope, this earth wire is really a catch-22, and you need to be aware of this actual system of where the BNC connector on the oscilloscope travels through the earth wire all the way back to your breaker panel and is connected to the neutral wire in your breaker panel. So whenever you have your oscilloscope plugged into the wall you always have to remember that this barrel connector is actually connected to one side of the AC line very very important thing to know and a very important thing to remember when you're using one of these types of oscilloscopes and most oscilloscopes are set up like this and they say that that's for safety sake well again that's it you know uh, kind of a catch-22 there so you just need to be aware of the way things are hooked up in your system so always always remember that the barrel of your scope goes right back to your breaker panels neutral Okay, let's take a look at the Variac here just quickly. And this is, again, more for Variac safety. A lot of people think that they can put these things in line and use this also as an isolation transformer because they look inside and they see a transformer-like apparatus, and it does say Auto Transformer on it. So they think that there's a form of isolation in a Variac. Well, there absolutely is not isolation in a Variac. And we'll just take a quick look at a drawing of really what's inside of your standard Variac. So let's move the camera over here a little. So this really is all that's inside of a Variac. You have the plug, which is your, your plug end here. And you have a transformer with a carbon brush inside of it. And when you turn the dial on the Variac, there's a carbon brush that 
runs along the windings of the transformer here. But as you can see, the neutral wire carries straight through to the other side. All right, the hot lead comes through a switch and usually through a fuse and then right into the transformer and then of course the brush into the your outlet over here. That's really just a, a standard variac. And these here cannot be mistaken for dimmers. These don't have triacs inside them. It's not a solid state device. This is an actual transformer. And of course, you know, there are quite a few uh, advantages to using a variac. A lot of people think that you can use a dimmer in place of a variac. Well, not really. Uh, a lot of different situations um, require a variac over a dimmer, and that's really quite a broad subject within itself. So for any kind of radio work or for any kind of test bench work, the, uh, the variac and the isolation transformer are two very important things. But again, always keep in mind that the variac or auto transformer will provide absolutely no isolation. Thanks for stopping by. I hope you enjoyed this Tech Tips Tuesday. If you did, you can let me know by giving me a big thumbs up. And hang around. There'll be many more videos just like this in the very near future. So until that time, bye for now.